today we're going to be exploring lots of different bass instruments from all around the orchestra. We're going to start with Zoe and she's going to tell us about her baroque bassoon and also play one of her favourite pieces. And then we're going to go and meet Karina again and she's going to play us another lovely movement from that Bach suite. Hello, I'm Zoe and I'm here to introduce my instrument, the baroque bassoon. My bassoon is a copy of a 300 year old instrument which is in a museum in Brussels and it was made for me here in London by instrument maker Matthew Dart. It's made of curly maple wood, um, which you can see, with brass keys and a brass crook. And it's a double reed instrument. Here's my reed. Um, and the reed on its own sounds like this. Today I'm going to play you one of my favourite bassoon pieces. It's by the French 18th century composer Bois Mortier and it's in the form of a rondo which means that the same music comes back again and again interspersed by little episodes or musical adventures in between. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> first solo cello suite in G major. So I thought I'd play the prelude from the same suite again today. Um, it's the most well-known movement from all of Bach's solo cello suites. And even though it's over 300 years old now, it's been used in lots of TV and film soundtracks. So it's really stood the test of time. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Spark is one of my favourite all-time pieces and I could listen to it every single day. We're now in totally OE fashion, going to break the rules and we're going to find out about a family of instruments from Leo and then Cecilia is going to introduce us to an instrument that we haven't seen or heard her play before. Hello there, I'm Leo, one of the oboists in the orchestra at the Age of Enlightenment and I'm going to talk to you today about some of the instruments in my collection. Now behind me, this forest of instruments are all German oboes, ranging from instruments or copies of instruments made around 300 years ago at the front here, to some instruments made only a hundred years ago at the back. And today I'm going to focus on three special instruments. These are all copies of instruments made in Leipzig in the first quarter of the 18th century, which is when this man, Johann Sebastian Bach, was writing music. The first instrument here is what we call the Baroque oboe. Uh, you might already have heard Nico play some Baroque oboe in a previous episode. I'll just give you a little taster of what this one sounds like. So this is the ordinary oboe. Next we move along to this lovely instrument which is called the oboe d'amore or the oboe of love. Now it's a little bit longer than the ordinary oboe so it plays a little bit lower and it's also got this lovely bulb shaped um, bell at the bottom of the instrument. But the most wonderful thing about it is its slightly darker, more mellower sound. It was part of a, of a fashion, of a trend in the 18th century for slightly lower, more mellow instruments. Uh, they had flutes de more, they also had violas de more. These are all specially silvery or, or beautifully muted instruments. And this is what this one sounds like. So that's the oboe de more. And now, finally, the one that everyone always wants to talk about is this beast over here. Now this is called an oboe da caccia, which is Italian for oboe of the hunt. Not that you'd want to be playing one of these on horseback, really. Um, it might get its name because it's of a brass bell that we've got at the bottom and the slightly curved appearance which make it look a little bit like the corno da caccia or the, the French horn, the hunting horn. We're not really sure why it gets its name but that's one possible example. Now you might expect this to sound really loud and really brash but actually it's got a slightly veiled quality. It's got covered in leather uh, which helps to mute the sound and Bach normally writes uh, more uh, plaintive and more tragic music for this instrument. 
in his famous uh, John Passion, there's a lovely movement, Zer Fliesse Mein Herz, uh, which is about uh, flowing tears. Um, and I'm going to play for you a lullaby that Bach writes for the other day. So there you are, three different oboes, all used by Johann Sebastian Bach. Hello everybody, welcome back to my house in East London. And I've left the double basses downstairs and I've come upstairs to show you a different bass instrument. This is quite an unusual one. This is my violone. And if you speak Italian, you will know that violone translates as big vial. And that's exactly what this is. And you can tell that by looking at it straight away because instead of four strings, as all the violin family instruments have, this has six. It also has frets, where I'm going to put my fingers, just like a guitar, just like all the instruments in the viol family. It has a flat back, not a swell back, and it has this bend at the shoulders. And as well as that, when you look at the corners, the corners are very simple, not pointy as they would be on a violin. And in addition to that, the bow is very different. So with the violin family instruments, we tend to hold the bow over the top. But with viols, the bow is held from underneath. So that all combines to give it a very different sound. Now this instrument, this bass instrument, almost combines the cello and the double bass. So I'll show you what I mean. This is the lowest note on a cello. But on a violone, that's my second string. I've got one more, so I can go even lower than the cello. And that's what takes me into the double bass range. So that lowest note is only two or three notes above the lowest note on a double bass. But you can hear it's got that slightly what I call dusky, dusty colour. And that's partly because I'm playing on gut strings and the gut strings are very thick. But it's also because I'm getting these low notes with a shorter string length than I would have on a double bass. And that gives it a very different colour. If I work my way up the instrument, so that's the cello one, but I'm going further up. My top string is just one note lower than a cello so I'm really in that cello range by the time I get up there. But what you have when you get to this top string is because this instrument is bigger than a cello to get that note the string has to be thin. So it's a bit like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. The strings at the top are a bit long and a bit thin. The strings at the bottom are a bit short but the strings in the middle are just right and that's where this instrument really resonates freely. But actually it's wonderful to have these different colours in one instrument. It's not really a failing, it's just very different. So with the aid of technology of my phone, I'm going to turn myself into a one woman vial consort to help explore those colours. I'm going to use this rich middle range, let me find the notes. <laughs> So that's where I'm going to start with the tune. I'm going to use the double bass register to give a little sort of bass ostinato. And then I'm going to use the sort of the higher cello, almost like a viola register, to play in canon. So we'll hear all three of those colours together and I'm sure you've recognised the tune. 
It's The Canon by Thomas Tallis. So I hope you enjoy my little home consult. See you again soon. Now for a very familiar tune with a beautiful walking bass line. This has been recorded by some of our principal players in their own homes during lockdown and it started with Stephen Devine laying down a track on his harpsichord and then it was passed round the other players and they added their tracks on top. I do hope you enjoy it. We've now done 
done six episodes in this series and we thought we might change it up a little bit. From next week, you'll find our episodes on our website and we've been preparing a whole range of musical treats for you. So, to finish today, we're going to give you the opportunity to sing a bass line with Cecilia and then we're going to introduce you to perhaps one of the most unusual bass instruments in the orchestra. Hello, here we are again in our front room with my double bass and Chris is poised by the piano and with a tambourine on his lap. So this is the point where we hope you'll join in and make music with us. And the song we've chosen today, we've chosen because you can be the bass. And as this episode is all about the bass, that seemed to fit rather nicely. It's a very simple song, very simple bass line, just four notes. That's all it is. Let, uh, let, I'm going to try singing it with a do, 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 do. Should we try that together? Do, 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 do. The words are slightly more complicated. They are do, up, a, do, up, a, do, up, a, do. I'm sure you get the idea. And where the rhythm comes in and the percussion is with the tambourine. So if you've got anything to hand that makes a sound, whether it's an instrument or not, it can be your hand on your knee, your foot on the floor, you could clap, whatever you like. Join in with Chris's tambourine. Do up a 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 do. And it just goes on and on like that throughout the whole song. Now, if you're thinking, hmm, I'm not sure I'm really a bass sort of person, there is a tune. I'll teach you the song. I'll teach it to Chris, and that'll give you a chance to learn it. And it's quite a cheery song. It's about all the things we like. And I'm thinking about the garden at this time when the flowers are really coming out and it's a riot of colour. And that's what we sing about first. So it's... I like the flowers. I like the daffodils. I like the flowers. I like the daffodils. Then we venture beyond the garden. I like the mountains. I like the rolling hills. I like the mountains, I like the rolling hills. And after you spent all day out on the mountains and the rolling hills, you come back in for... I like the fireside when the lights are low. I like the fireside when the lights are low. Singing do up a do up a do up a do. You know that bit already. So the whole song, if I put it together, let's try it once through together. It goes like this. I like the flowers, I like the daffodils, I like the mountains, I like the rolling hills, and I like the fireside when the lights are low. Singing do up a do up a do up a do up a do. So that's how the song goes. We are going to sing it all the way through once, and then we're going to sing it another two times, but in a round with the aid of the technology that we have in the house. So you can choose whether to just keep singing with me. You can choose whether to just be the bass line and sing in the do upper with Chris. And whatever you do, you can play your percussion instruments along all the way through. So if you're ready, we're going to start with the most important thing. And that's all of you who are singing the bass line. So here goes.
thank you for joining us again. See you again another time.